Hello, this is HG Bailey, and welcome back to Let's Play Disgaea 2! I was thinking to myself earlier today, HG Bailey, isn't there a way to start Axel mode without having completed Adele mode first? And yeah, there actually is a way. Uh, someone informed me of how to do this, I did not figure it out on my own. I'll post a link in the video description, but let's see, I'm using a PS4 controller, so if you're on the start menu there, then you go triangle, square, circle, triangle, square, circle, and then X. Showtime! Ha ha! Yeah, if you hear showtime, that means that you've entered the code correctly and you start Axel mode at a relatively lower level and the enemies will also be much lower level too. There's actually a good reason for doing this too because completing Axel mode unlocks well, actually, just getting into Axel mode unlocks certain gameplay mechanics that I'll be going into later on. And that could help you out in a down mode there if you want it to. But I think you're pretty well intended to do a down mode first. So this is just another way you could do it. And actually, one of the reasons why I wanted to do this, not just to tell you the code... But I want to show you where all the switches are for unlocking the Dark World in Axel mode. The thing is, is that since I already unlocked the Dark World in Adele mode, I can't unlock it in Axel mode because it's already unlocked. So I can't even like see where the switches would be in A Axel mode here. So I figured this would be a good way for me to show that off to you. What the hell is this thing anyway? Well, I'll just tell you, there, that's the fifth switch. Ha ha! Yeah, just like Adele mode, you press all the switches here, and yeah, there's your Dark World guide there. And let's see, one other thing I wanted to mention. Th that sign there, uh, Aku... Akutalu? Something? I don't know. I think that's supposed to be Axel's name in Romanji. That would be my best guess. But given that I know nothing about the language, I I wouldn't really know for sure. But, okay, so that's everything here. Let's get back to my regular file that I will be using here. And I decided to make a couple changes to my setup. First, I'm going to turn these... I turned these back on so that way you could see the new animations and everything like that. And I also decided to buy some gear for Axel to put into use. I wasn't planning on doing this, but I figured, hey, let's give it a shot. Show off some of his best moves. And I got the stuff, the best stuff money can buy. But I do have even better stuff. Like, let's see, I think I got a legendary god hand in the item world. Yeah, yeah, that would be way more powerful. And, of course, I also have accelerators here that I boosted up to the a movement stat of 6 there. And not to mention the speed stat there. That would be huge for Axel. But, well, let's just start with this and go from there. I may or may not decide to stick with Axel, I may just eventually decide, hey, let's just nuke everything and move on. But anyway, yeah, so I did that with three of the accelerators, boosted their movement stat up to six there, and the reason I got collector specialists on Lloyd there is because I got the legendary infernal staff at a rarity of one, so I used the, where are they? Yeah, I used the collector specialists to boost the rarity of all these items, which were originally zero, up to one, so that way they would boost the stats from all of them put together there by matching the rarity number there. But everything out, everyone else I got, infernal stabs. If you only have sage stabs, don't worry about it. You don't need all of that stuff. But it is a really good idea to have three characters who could have a movement stat of 15 or more Bare minimum of 14, but 15 would be ideal. Namely for some dark world stages that I want to do. But if you don't care about that stuff, then don't worry about it. Okay, well, let's get started and 
We're gonna, yeah, go to the rehearsal for the Evil Rangers, I guess. <laughs> Who cares about being a host? I'm the dark hero. I'm the perfect guy to play an evil hero. I bet my little bro will be surprised to learn that I'll be on the Evil Ranger show. What does that sign say behind you there? Is that Japanese? I have no idea. Oh, I should take a prop home to give to him. Yeah, that's a good idea. Buy a souvenir. Hey, okay, let's go. Here's your script. Oh, so that's where the script went. Oh, are you one of my fans? Can you wait till later to get an autograph? Let me just do some creative editing so Adele will lose to me. I I'm part of the cast. Hero number one. Oh, one of the Rangers? Or? Oh, so you're one of those guys who get beat up by the evil Rangers, ah. huh? You must be an aspiring actor who looks up to me. You want me to give you some acting lessons, right? Well, the monthly fee is... You're an actor? Before this, I mean? Hey, aren't you Axel? Hey! Huh? Weren't you a member of that idol group, Smarmy Army? Man, I, I haven't seen you in like 10 years. Yeah, you're even less relevant than I am. Look at you now. You've got a one-line part on this show, which is Kerpow. Krakow, Krakow. Two direct hits. No one's gonna get that reference. God, I'm old. Don't you know, you're hero number two. Oh, so you mean I'm going to betray you because I'm the real bad guy. I'm hero number two? Or maybe you just take over after... Hero number one sacrifices himself for the cause. <laughs> well, look at you now. Well, considering what you did on that one day, I'm really not surprised. What, what happened then? Don't answer that, viewers. You're not going to tell us, are you? Uh. <laughs> you caused so much damage to your sponsor's evil image, I couldn't believe it. Isn't that evil? <laughs> I think hero number two is the perfect way for you to make up for the biggest mistake in history. What mistake? No! This must be some kind of mistake! Or, or, maybe it's a trap set up by some other kingdom! They have kingdoms in other worlds? Well, I suppose we have castles. Are you guys ready? We're starting the rehearsal! What kind of rehearsal? Uh-oh. You can't fool me! Try again in a million light years! Ludicrous speed! Go! So, are we rehearsing or fighting? Well, we're gonna be fighting these guys, so... Okay, well, let's see some of Axel's best moves! Actually, let's organize his abilities there. There we are. Well, one of the advantages of doing Axel mode after... A down mode is that well he already has the levels for all of his abilities so let's put them to use here so are you like a pop idol or rock star or something maybe you should try Beating your enemies over the head with your guitar. <laughs> After all that... Yeah, once they miss on the first hit, if they're doing something that hits you multiple times, you know that they're not going to hit you at all. But, okay, well, let's try out another move that we got here. No, not that one. Yeah, this one. It's not very powerful, but it should get the job done. Let's see. Yeah, they're too high up for that. So let's just hit them both this way. Oh yeah, I think I saw him use that when I was fighting him one time. Dumbass. 
Well, let's put his final character ability to use. Maybe I'll show off some of the fist skills that I wasn't able to do in the main storyline with the Dow. Usually I get him up to level 10 with his fist skills, but yeah, I guess not this time around. Oh. oh, there we go. I was like, wait, what? Don't scare me like that, game. No, let's see what else is going on here. You see me now? I am best suited to play myself, the dark hero. Hey, all right. Yep, I got it, hero number two. I mean, Mr. Axel. I guess this is kind of like the play in the intro of Final Fantasy IX. It's very dark hero of you to mistake me for a spy and to lay hands on me before asking any questions. You're starting to creep me out. Huh? I, I see. So it was a mistake this time. Are they your co-stars? Anyway, don't worry about it. I don't mind taking over your part. I don't mind taking over all the parts. And I don't mind giving up my role as evil pink for you, Mr. Axel. Meow. Quit saying meow that way. Uh, I don't know about that pink part. Well, you got the pants. Leave the sex appeal to me. I can do a shower scene every episode. Who do you think you are, Hanukkah? Might be the same voice actress. Kind of sounds hey, like her. What can I say? My dark hero ness also appeals to monsters. Fine, you can be my sidekick. How can you have a sidekick on a team of rangers? How does that even work? But we do get more party members, so let's see what we got. So she is a monster character, so I bought the best weapon we can get for her at this point. And let me see, I probably got some extra shoes somewhere around here. Don't I? Well, I got a whole bunch of angel sandals. Yeah, let's just go with that. That'll be fine. I was gonna just give her regular slippers, but whatever. And I'll put her at the top of the inventory, or party list later. But anyway, oh, what do we got here? Oh. Well, whatever works for you. I guess you are a demon after all. Um, yeah, you, you're ready to audition? Yeah, you got the part. No one else wanted it. Not working with Axel. Holy cow. What are you so scared of him for? You're a demon! How hard could he possibly be? Oh, okay. So he works with us. Or you could do that. Oh, how do we do that? Yeah, sure, why not? Let's go through a little tutorial of some of the new mechanics they've added to Axel Mode here. Now this is only in the PSP version of the game, though I suppose it should be obvious. And from what I heard, the new mechanics were originally in Disgaea 3, and then they retroactively put it into Disgaea 2 in the remakes, like the PSP version eventually. So basically, yeah, in Disgaea 2, monsters, or even the first game too, monsters you can't lift and throw, which is one of the major hindrances that they have. But now they have the... Bouncing mechanic, I guess, or toss and pass. So, she's a monster type character, so she can't lift and throw. But, if you lift a monster, or I guess it would work with a humanoid character. Now, since the monster would be your ally, 
they wouldn't combine together. Normally, you can't throw them. It, or throw a character onto another monster. Because, yeah. But once you're in Axel mode, you get a little bouncing mechanic. And something I don't think they mention here is that if your monster is facing a different direction, it'll bounce in the direction of the monster you threw them in. So you can kind of throw characters around a corner like that. And the distance that the enemy will be bounced to is based on the throw stat of the monster, not the person doing the throwing. So something you could do is create a printy for that purpose. I think they have a throw stat of six, if I recall correctly. And that can be pretty nice. And there's another new command, also from this guy of three, I believe, called... I don't know how you pronounce it. Maja Change? That would be my guess. Meiji Change? I think it's Maja Change. That's how I'm going to go with it. Meiji Change? But, yeah, how does it work? One thing about magic change is that since monsters don't have a lift and throw command, once you are in axle mode, they have magic change instead of the lift and throw command. But since they don't have the lift and throw command, it just replaces it. If you have lift and throw binded to a button on a controller, in my case R2, then you could mod to change with that instead. Even though the hotkey menu still calls it lift and throw. I kind of stumbled on that myself by accident. But anyway, yeah, when you mod to change, a monster becomes a new weapon for that character. And sometimes you get their abilities, or their active abilities, or their passive abilities. It depends on the monster there. And there's actually another part to it that they don't go over here called Magic Change 2. But you can't do that until going back into Adele mode. Or maybe you could do that in Axel mode now that I think about it. But you gotta find a character from Disgaea 3 in one of the mystery rooms in order to unlock Magic Change 2. Too. And I'll go over that when we get to it. But I'm not going to be doing that until I go back into Adele mode anyway. But yeah, so you get new abilities. Sometimes they're pretty powerful. I don't use it too much, but it is really, really good for level grinding once we get back into Adele mode. Because of some characters that you can recruit there. There's a lot of extra characters that I did not show off yet. Because a lot of them require uh, a lot of them require you to be pretty high leveled in order to beat them normally without doing like a poison sleep thing ha ha well he is pretty high leveled there Well, that would be the general idea. Okay, so now let's take him on for real here. Okay, he's not nearly as high level as in the little tutorial there. But anyway, so we got our monster there. Got a humanoid character. So then use magic change. And, well, let's see what the ability we got is. Yeah, it's the same thing that we had in the tutorial. Except I need to be in a different position. Okay, let's try that again. He's still magic changed, even though I sent him back to the base panel. I don't know if this would be enough to kill the guy. Yeah, not quite. Okay, I'll just use one of his regular fist abilities then. That is, if he survives. Ow! Quit it. Okay, well, that wasn't so bad, was it? Okay, let's try this one again. 
Let's go... Well, Rising Dragon is actually a pretty good ability because... Let's say you're in the item world and you've got a gatekeeper in a corner that you couldn't move with, like, a triple strike or something. Yeah, you can just knock him out and throw them right behind you, practically. But you do have to have quite a bit of room for that to work, too. So sometimes you just gotta kill the gatekeeper. Unfortunately, they don't have the invincibility effect on them anymore there. Okay, well, let's show off another move here. Let's see. Okay, so we got that one. Yeah, let's try this one. Didn't get a chance to do that with Adele, even though usually I do, but... Oh, well. Ha-ha! Much better. So, yeah, after two turns, the magic change would break, and then you couldn't use whoever the monster you use for the magic change for the remainder of the battle, if I recall correctly. But anyway, okay, so we've got her set up there. I'm probably not going to use magic change again in <laughs> Axel mode. There's really not much of a point to doing that there. Let's see. Ah, okay. So, yeah, that tutorial battle, yeah, we don't actually go back to it again here. But how powerful is Evil Pink on her own? Find out next time on Let's Play Disgaea 2! This is H.G. Bailey, signing off. Have a good day!